Hi and welcome to Chandu.org. In this video, let's talk about how you can create cascading drop downs. Now, the words cascading drop downs sounds like a bunch of technical jargon. Don't worry. This is a really commonplace business scenario. Let me briefly explain what we mean by cascading drop downs. Let's say you are making a dashboard or report and uh, this report shows the summary of uh, some sort of data like projects or sales or employees or payroll or whatever uh, across various cities in the United States of America. Now since you have operations in lots of cities uh, making user selection like asking user to say okay pick a city uh, is going to be very tricky because the drop down or data validation whatever you set up is going to be very very long so you figured why not make it a two step selection the first step would be selecting a state and the second step would be picking a city now this concept this idea of uh, making a selection in two or three levels is basically called as cascading selection okay so because the selections are usually handled through a drop down it could be a data validation or or a or a form control of a drop down uh, the name cascading drop downs is used i'm sorry for that um, and uh, but how do we create such drop downs if it is only one list to be loaded in in the way in in that place we know how to do it right we set it up as a range and we point the list to the data validation or the form control and that picks up that range but the range of the cities will change depending on what state user has selected so if user picks california it shows the cities in california whereas if they pick washington it will show show the cities in the state of washington so how are we going to do this uh, there are many techniques to do this and uh, at shendu.org not surprisingly we have discussed a couple of methods over the past uh, but today I'm going to summarize one method which is uh, pretty much the standard variation of doing this uh, in, in video so that you know how to set up cascading drop downs. Although I'm demonstrating this with the data validation, the same technique will work with, uh, with form controls as well. So let me jump into the workbook here. And, um, and we have some data like this just to keep it simple i have only set it up for five states and each state has a bunch of cities now the data is arranged like this but your data may not be like this it could be in another structure it will be useful if you could set it up like this uh, if not then you have to use some other type of technique okay so we have state and the cities for that state are listed across the columns you can keep all of this set up in a separate worksheet it doesn't have to be on the same page where the selection happens I've kept it everything in one place so it's easy for us to see and learn so if I pick Ohio I I should see these four cities whereas if I pick, pick uh, California I should see these five cities so here is our state selection I am going to pick Ohio and uh, I'm going to see these options I can pick data but if I change my mind and I want to see Texas, I can do that because Dayton is no longer a city in Texas. Um, it's it's going to be highlighted and a red colored mark is printed saying that, you know, this has gone stale. You need to reselect. But when you go there, uh, you will be able to pick up the correct state, city within, within Texas. So this is how the cascading drop downs are set up. Now, let me explain the basic setup logic behind this. So we first start by setting up the data like this and then we select all the states and give them a name. Setting up the names is not necessary but if you have the names your formulas will be smaller. So we have all of these named as a states. This is a very very straightforward thing. You simply select this and type the name here or you go to your formulas, define name and set it up as a name, uh, something like states. If you are using two different levels that are not state and city but let's say department and employee or um, state and plant names or something like that you could use level one and level two as names so in this case this will be our level one and uh, we, we named it as states the next thing is we set it up in a cell with the data validation uh, and uh, 
this this one is is going to be a list that is equal to states so we can only see the num name number of states there and user can only pick one of them they can't type a state that's not part of the states list so that's the data validation rule here then the next step is we need to dynamically generate a name called as cities again I'm using a name cities but you could write that as a level 2 or uh, employee list or whatever uh, cities that should be equal to those cities that correspond to uh, the selected state so if I pick Texas I, I expect the cities list to contain these four cities whereas if I select California I expect the cities list to contain these five cities so not only the contents of the list cities is dynamic but the number of items there will also going to change depending on the state for example New York is only going to have three cities whereas California will have five Washington will have six okay so how do we set it up again there is a simple way to do it you could you could write a complex formula or you could break it down so what I have done is I have first broken it down into two steps first thing is we want to count how many cities are there within the said state this can be done with a count a formula count a of index now you can probably hear the squirrel in the background that's uh, a squirrel which probably found some nuts or something let me go silence it well the squirrel wouldn't shut up and I haven't got all day to record this video so let me talk about this so we got your count a formula which counts the contents of a range uh, what would that range be it's the it's the range where we, we say all cities I've just created a name that contains the entire range where all the cities are listed within the all cities I want to find out what is the user selection Texas in the states um, and then notice the last comma I'm going to explain that in a minute but first let's look at this formula so we are saying find out the position of the state in the list of states so the Texas position will be 5 and then we are asking hey index out of all the cities give me the cities in the row number 5 alone so when you write index formula with all cities and this number becomes 5 and then the next number the column number is omitted we just pay, write a comma but we don't specify the column number notice that column number is highlighted but I'm not writing the column number then what happens is index gives me that entire row okay so index is going to return an array that's equivalent to that range from Dallas all the way through this blank cell there because these are blanks we will count only four okay so that one comes up as four and I know that uh, in Texas there are four cities so my next job is go from Dallas all the way up to here these four cells and get them into the cities this is where you could again use a bunch of different formulas we will use offset offset all cities uh, the row number to offset would be match Texas within states as an exact match because Texas is the fifth one so what happens is uh, all states all cities is here and when you count one two three four five we are going to go all the way there so we need to subtract one because we already started with Ohio even though uh, ideally we should have started there so I'm going to say minus one uh, we don't need to offset any columns so that will be empty or zero uh, and uh, the height is one we, we want one row height and the width is this many okay so that's going to give you a list of cities although you only see Austin here it's basically containing all the cities if I select this and press control equal to I can see my four cities there Dallas Houston Austin and San Antonio so that's the that's what that formula returns but what we are now doing is instead of writing it as separate formulas we simply set it up as a named formula or a named range cities which equals to that one I'm going to show you where that is done we go here I have set up a bunch of different names states for the list of states all cities for your entire all city region 
city count is nothing but your count a of index uh, formula the same one that we wrote earlier um, that tells me how many cities are there and the cities formula is nothing but your all cities match of um, user selection minus one one comma city count so this is going to give me the list of cities as an array uh, stored in the name cities so then I select this one I go to data validation and point to a list that's equal to cities so this one is always going to contain the cities of the state that is selected there so if I select Washington I'm going to see my Washington cities there okay so this is how you can set up cascading drop downs it's a little bit technical so I will call this as an advanced Excel tutorial not for the faint-hearted or people who have never played with index or offset formulas if you are somebody like that I highly recommend that you first read up about those two beautiful formulas index and offset and while you're at it maybe learn a little bit more about count ifs count a and match as well uh, because those are the individual nuts and bolts that kind of fit into this puzzle here now uh, that's the way you can set up cascading drop downs there is also other another way which is a little simpler uh, and works with another kind of data structure so if you don't have state and city like that instead you simply have state city as a combination so you have Ohio four rows New York three rows Washington six rows like that uh, you can set it up as a pivot table and add slicers for both city, state and city column and uh, that way what happens is when you when you filter one slicer let's say the state slicer only the cities within that state will light up okay let me show that example to you as well so the first thing is you need to rearrange your data or have your data in this shape where you have city and state state and city combinations like this and then we will insert a pivot table just for the sake of simplicity I have arranged the data as a table but you can have it as a range as well it would still work so we will insert a pivot table I'm going to insert in a new sheet because this one can get cluttered and uh, we add both state and city uh, sorry uh, we add both the state and city as slicers okay so we get two slicers one with the state and one with city let me just uh, set it up in three columns okay uh, so for because all the states are currently selected all the cities are available but if I pick Ohio I can only see the Ohio options of course other ones are also there but you can't make a selection there so if you want to just see the Ohio cities not see all other cities like Seattle, Yakima and San Antonio you can right click on this slicer go to uh, your uh, slicer settings and uh, and simply say hide items with no data okay so that's going to hide that and we will now have a cross filtering slicer okay so you can pick Texas you can pick New York you can pick Washington you can pick California so here you select one item and those cities will load up essentially a cascading selection mechanism for your dashboard of course this requires that you set up your data you have a pivot table through which you drive your slicers and if you want to know what user has picked you need to have both the state and city added to your pivot table okay maybe something like that and uh, rearrange the report structure uh, in a tabular form with uh, no subtotals and no grand total so you will see your state and city selections like that okay I was a little fast there but um, uh, once you make a selection there you, you should be able to um, okay this is actually a little bit roundabout because the way this works is if you pick a selection then in order to make another state selection because what's happening is if I pick San Francisco here I I see that I, these are now disabled okay so this can create a little bit of um, um, incorrect or inconsistent experience for users when when you're dealing with the UI so you will have to tweak the slicer styles as well as settings a little bit more uh, to get that uh, kind of a look that once you make a selection here you can still make another state selection there and work with it. 
So that's how you can set up cascading selection mechanism through drop downs and option buttons here or using slicers there. So if you are a beginner Excel user, I would recommend the slicer route because they are easy to set up and no formula writing whatsoever but they can get a little bit tricky to handle the user experience and the sizing and, and, and space required for them. If you are more advanced user and you want to have finer control and, uh, and limit the amount of space used for the selection, use this mechanism. This is really uh, powerful and it works very elegantly too. So thank you so much for watching this video. I apologize for the noisy squirrels which I realize now is a good name for a rock band. <laughs> um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please visit shendu.org where you can grab a file uh, for this example. In case you're watching this on YouTube, just scroll down uh, to the description and uh, you will find a link that will take you to shendu.org where you can get a copy of this workbook. On shendu.org, I am also going to provide links to other techniques for cascading dropdowns as well as a brief introduction of slicers, index, match and offset formulas which can help you become an advanced Excel user. Thank you so much for watching. You have an awesome day. Bye-bye.